Hey everybody, it's AJ from alphapixel.net and today I am super excited to bring you the new tool that I just finished up called the Modeling Cam version 2.0. Some of you guys may remember version 1.0 from a few years back, but this time around I have completely rebuilt it into something far more useful than the previous version. This new version helps you along every step of the process when setting up projection maps in Cinema 4D. It brings all the useful tools that you need to set up and modify projection maps right to your fingertips. And it's something I thought every Cinema 4D user should have. So today I am excited to share it with you and let's just jump right in on setting up a quick projection and I'll show you why this thing is super useful. So right away you'll see the only thing you really need is the modeling cam and a null under it. There's some other objects hidden inside of a layer that you don't need to mess with, but feel free to look in there if you want to. All of the controls are inside of the modeling cam, inside of user data aptly named modeling cam. So in that tab at the top, we have our on switch and I'll explain why we need an on switch more towards the end here, it'll make sense. Um, so first off, we need our image. So we're gonna go ahead and load in an image. And this image I got from Unsplash from a photographer named Josh Couch. So thanks for that, Josh. And when we open it, watch the image dimensions and aspect ratio, it automatically updates for us and will tell us the image Image, rate, image dimensions and the ratio. And why that's important is, if you see the camera's outline here is not matched up with the image. So if we go into our render settings, we can do one of two things to get that to line up. We can go in and actually set it to the actual width and height of the image, or we can just copy the aspect ratio and paste it in here. And now everything is lined up with the image. So we're ready to start lining things up for our projection. And the first thing you want to do is get your focal length, your camera focal length to match the image focal length. And if you don't know that, you can actually use Cinema 4D's camera calibration tag where you set up lines that match the image's perspective lines and it will kind of estimate the camera's focal length. But for a lot of images, it might be pretty straightforward if you have a nice ground plane to look at with perspective lines like this one. It's not super clear, but I think we can get it close enough that it'll work. I'm actually going to keep it at 50 for now, and I'm actually going to drop an image or a cube in here so I can start lining it up. This isn't going to be an object we use. I just want to be able to rotate around it so we can move our perspective grid. So I wanted to get it to line up with, whoops, I wanted to get it to line up with some of the lines in the, the photo here. So I don't really like the spacing of this, of the perspective grid right now. So one handy thing in the modeling cam is I can, well, first of all, I can turn their perspective grid off if I want, but it's actually helping me right now. So I'm gonna leave it on. Now we can override the perspective grid spacing. And if we check that, well, it became too big, but we can decrease it now so we can get more lines so we can line things up. Because you want to keep everything as close to the center origin as possible. So when you're creating new objects, they're actually popping up in front of you and not somewhere really far away. So I am gonna start lining this line up here with the image. And I think that's pretty good. I might need to tilt it up a little more. The edge of the table over here looks like it might be tipped up a little bit. And that's, look, that's looking pretty good. So when you think you have your perspective matched to the image, you can go ahead and hit the lock camera position. Now you can't move your camera accidentally. And I'll, of course you can do that over here as well, lock camera position. So I'm gonna get rid of this cube now that I think I have everything in position. And I'm gonna start with modeling this cup right here. So I'm gonna grab a cylinder and we're gonna drag any models that we're gonna to use to model on, to projection map onto. We're gonna to wanna to drop into the model tab. And you'll see right away, now we can see the image on top of it because our projection image is tied in, is set on top of the camera. So anything under that is getting that image overlaid. And also in the modeling cam, and I have it docked over here in the viewport, we can set the different modes. So we can set it to not see the lines if we, if we want that. We can do the wireframe, or we can just do texture wireframe, or and we can turn on and off back face culling if we want. 
So there's a few different view options for that. And I like the, uh, right now I like the texture wireframe mode because I can see my object, but I can also see the image on top of it. So first thing we wanna do is get the bottom of this object lined up with the top of the perspective grid. So I'm actually gonna convert this to a polygon object and I'm gonna set the axis to the bottom. And I keep my axis center tool docked at all times because I use it all the time. So I've set my negative Y axis to, zero, to negative 100% and if I hit execute, that drops it to the bottom of the model. And now what you could do is either select your object, go into coordinates and set this to zero, or if you have the drop to floor plugin, which is infinitely useful, just go ahead and select your object and click that. And now it's on the floor. You'll see it popped up a little bit and off of where we wanted it. So we're gonna slide it around only on the X and Z, not on the Y. You wanna get it lined up so that it stays on the floor and now from here, we're just going to scale it down and it's going to stay locked to that floor. So let's get it roughly, let's get the base set up and then we can modify the top. So that's in position there. Now I'm going to go into point mode here and I'm just going to adjust the top. Now if we scale that up, we're actually going to see that we, it kind of came off the model here and that's because when I converted it, um, it separated the caps. So I'm gonna undo that quick and I'm gonna deselect all and I'm gonna hit my optimize button and that should weld all the points that are overlapping. So now I should be able to drag that out. And one thing we're gonna see right away is that my grid or my perspective line up here with the camera was not exactly right that it should looks like the top should be tilted back a little bit more so we're going to unlock the camera position here and i'm going to i'm just going to grab model mode here and i'm going to click and drag and try to line that top of that mug up a little bit better i'm not mug but uh sorry glass and with that lined up i'm going to move the object again and kind of get it See, that's looking better. That's looking a lot better. Okay, now let me lock my camera again and grab points and I'll scale it in just to match that top piece there. Awesome, so we have our image modeled there. So here's the feature that I love about this is that we can we can't quite see exactly you know how everything's lined up on the edges here and we can't zoom in and if we were because it's locked but even if we could we'd be moving the camera which is going to change perspective and you wouldn't be able to see so i have this model mode built in which again is under the camera tab as well or under the camera options but i have it docked so in model mode we can then use cinema 40s camera magnification camera move and camera zoom tool tools and what these do is it just lets you zoom straight in and it does not distort the perspective. It does not move your camera. It just lets you magnify your image and keep it flat. So if we grab the tool, we can select the top area here and we can grab the zoom and we can zoom in and just double check that all of our points are lined up and it's pretty good. It's not bad. I mean, I could tweak it a little bit, but I don't really think you're going to see that too bad in the projection. So since that looks good, I'm going to hit reset view, so which, is, which will bring us back. Next thing we can do is actually test our projection. So when I hit projection test here, that actually switches the camera to a camera identical to this one, except that we can move it without moving our projection. So now I can actually zoom in to the image. And I can rotate around it if I want. And I think the projection of it looks good. I can hit reset view and go back. And if I uncheck that again, now I won't be able to move again. So that is only to just test the projection. And one thing I can do real quick is add a floor and just drop that in there in the models as well. Just make it a little bit bigger. 
now we have a floor for it. So if I go into projection test again, actually I'm gonna just do texture mode. And if I go projection test, now we actually have a floor to look at. And there you can see the setup is looking very nice. All right, I'll just show you one other quick thing here. Now that we've got this all set up, the perspective and the geometry of the cup, modeling this cup over here will be super easy because all we have to do is take our current cup and control command drag it to copy it and just roughly place it in position and only on the Z and X axis so we know that it still sits on the table here and I'm just gonna go I'm gonna so we can we have a hide uh, uh, sorry uh, perspective grid option we can turn the perspective grid off because we don't need that anymore now that we know our table is lined up with the perspective grid and we can turn on our texture or our wireframe turn on the back face culling and we'll just modify this just a little bit to match the cup in the background and again I'm going to go into my model mode and I lost my palette here so I'm gonna grab my palette back I'm just gonna zoom in and I'm just gonna grab the top of this here and come down a little bit come in a little bit and just kind of shift it over it's not super important that it's hundred percent accurate as long as it lines up so I'm gonna hit reset view and I'm just gonna bring that out just a hair more here and let's just do a little projection test here and see see how it's looking so if we hit projection test let's go back into texture mode now we can yeah it's looking pretty good you can even rotate around and it looks pretty good still get a lot of you can rotate pretty far without it really breaking of course you'd have to go in and paint out a background texture without the cup in it to get that but that's not what this tutorial is about so and then of course you could come in and model these other things here we've got another cup like thing on the side here we could just really quick scale that up scale it down on the Y just get a peek at our wireframe there maybe just crease that a little bit and we'll do one more projection test here turn our texture mode back on now we have that. Of course the spoon is cutting into it a little bit and again we'd have to go into Photoshop and create a texture without the spoon. We have to clone in just part of that little tin cup back there. But overall not too bad and pretty easy to set up. That's it for part one of the modeling cam overview. We went over most of the features of the modeling cam but in part two we are going to set up a quick city scene where we just try out a different projection and show you any features that we missed in part one so stay tuned and check that out or head on over to the website and download the modeling cam and give it a try for yourself thanks everybody